which sets below form a basis for P2, there may be more than one answer. Notice each of the sets contains three polynomials, and this is important to recognize because the dimension of P2 is three, which indicates any basis for P2 must contain a set of three polynomials. So we can approach this problem two ways. Because we have a set of three polynomials in P2, number one, we can check to see if the set of polynomials is independent. If it is, then the set must also span P2 and forms a basis for P2. Number two, we can also check to see if the set of polynomials spans P2. In this video though, we will take approach one, but we're also going to convert the polynomials to vectors and see if the set of three vectors is independent. If the set is independent, it also spans R3, and therefore the set of polynomials must form a basis for P2. Each vector will be in the form of a sub zero, a sub one, a sub two, where a sub zero is the constant, a sub one is the coefficient in our case of x, and a sub two in our case is the coefficient of x squared. Let's begin by considering the first set of polynomials. Let's first form the three vectors for the three polynomials, where seven plus two x plus four x squared is the vector seven, two, four. Two plus x is the vector two, one, zero. Notice it's zero because the x squared term would be zero x squared. And 20 plus four x plus 16 x squared is the vector 24, 16. To test for independence, we now form the homogeneous vector equation where we have the linear combinations of the three vectors equal to the zero vector. From here we can write the augmented matrix where the first row is seven, two, 20, zero. The second row is two, one, four, zero. And the third row is four, zero, 16, zero. Next we write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which I've already done here on the right. Notice because we have three variables and three rows where the last row is a row of zeros, we know we have a dependent system or an infinite number of solutions, which indicates we have more than the trivial solution to the homogeneous vector equation, which indicates the vectors are dependent and therefore they don't form a basis for R3 and therefore the set of polynomials does not form a basis for P2. But let's show a little extra work here. Let's label the first three columns C sub one through C sub three. The first row indicates that C sub one plus four C sub three is equal to zero. The second row indicates that C sub two minus four C sub three equals zero. And if we identify the pivots, which are in row one, column one, and row two, column two, we know C sub one and C sub two are the basic variables, and C sub three is a free variable, which we can state as C sub three equals C sub three. Let's go ahead and solve the first two equations for C sub one and C sub two. C sub one is equal to negative four C sub three. C sub two is equal to positive four C sub three. And again, C sub three is equal to C sub three. This indicates we can let C sub three be any real number and then find C sub one and C sub two. Again, indicating we have an infinite number of solutions and therefore the set of vectors is dependent and so is the set of polynomials, which means they don't form a basis for P2. I do wanna show how we would do this if we did not convert to vectors. We would form linear combinations of the three polynomials and set it equal to the zero polynomial written as zero plus zero x plus zero x squared. Next we would distribute C sub one, C sub two, and C sub three. Then we would group the terms so that we can equate the coefficients, meaning we group the terms that have zero factors of x, group the terms that have one factor of x, and group the terms that have two factors of x or a factor of x squared. Then we factor out x and x squared, and then finally equate the coefficients, which gives us the equations seven c sub one plus two c sub two plus 20 c sub three equals zero, two c sub one plus c sub two plus four c sub three equals zero, and finally, four C sub one plus 16 C sub three equals zero, which I've already written as equations here on the left. From here, we can form the augmented matrix and then write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. So notice how this was quite a bit more work than converting to vectors, 
But if we compare these two matrices to the previous method, notice how they are exactly the same. But I think you can see why I decided to convert to vectors rather than work with the polynomials. And now check the second set to see if it forms a basis for P2. Negative x is the vector 0, negative 1, 0. 1 plus 2x is the vector 1, 2, 0. x plus x squared is the vector 0, 1, 1. And again, we form the homogeneous vector equation where we have the linear combinations of the given three vectors equal to the zero vector. Then we form the augmented matrix and write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Let's again label the columns C sub one through C sub three. Notice now we have a pivot in each of the variable columns where the first row indicates that C sub one is equal to zero. The second row indicates that C sub two equals zero and the third row indicates that C sub three equals zero. Notice here we only have the trivial solution to the homogeneous vector equation, which indicates a set of vectors is independent. And because we have three vectors in R3, they also span R3, which tells us the set of polynomials is independent and spans P2 and therefore forms a basis for P2. So we do select the second set of polynomials and now we check the last set. We first form the corresponding vectors. Negative x squared is the vector 0, 0, negative 1. x plus 2x squared is the vector 0, 1, 2. And 1 plus x squared is the vector 1, 0, 1. Next, we form the homogeneous vector equation, set up the augmented matrix, and write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. We can quickly see again we have three pivots. The number of pivots matches the number of variables where the first row indicates that C sub one equals zero, the second row indicates that C sub two equals zero, and the third row indicates that C sub three equals zero. Once again, we only have the trivial solution to the homogeneous vector equation, and therefore the set of vectors is independent and spans R3, which indicates the set of polynomials is independent, spans P2, and is a basis for P2. The third set of polynomials is also a basis for P2. I hope you found this helpful.